section thirty nine of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twenty two a certain cure for the bite of a mad dog let the patient be blooded at the arm nine or ten ounces take of the herb called in latin lichen cinereus terrestris in english ash-coloured ground liverwort cleaned dried and powdered half an ounce of black pepper powdered two drams mix these well together and divide the powder into four doses one of which must be taken every morning fasting for four mornings successively in half a pint of cow's milk warm after these four doses are taken the patient must go into the cold bath or a cold spring or river every morning fasting for a month he must be dipped all over but not to stay in with his head above water longer than half a minute if the water be very cold after this he must go in three times a week for a fortnight longer note well the lichen is a very common herb and grows generally in sandy and barren soils all over england the right time to gather it is in the months of october and november from d mead another for the bite of a mad dog for the bite of a mad dog for either man or beast take six ounces of rue clean picked and bruised four ounces of garlic peeled and bruised four ounces of venice treacle and four ounces of filed pewter or scraped tin boil these in two quarts of the best ale in a pan covered close over a gentle fire for the space of an hour then strain the ingredients from the liquor give eight or nine spoonfuls of it warm to a man or a woman three mornings fasting eight or nine spoonfuls is sufficient for the strongest a lesser quantity to those younger or of a weaker constitution as you may judge of their strength ten or twelve spoonfuls for a horse or a bullock three four or five to a sheep hog or dog this must be given within nine days after the bite it seldom fails in man or beast if you bind some of the ingredients on the wound it will be so much the better receipt against the plague take of rue sage mint rosemary wormwood and lavender a handful of each infuse them together in a gallon of white wine vinegar put the whole into a stone pot closely covered up upon warm wood ashes for four days after which draw off or strain through fine flannel the liquid and put it into bottles well corked and into every quart bottle put a quarter of an ounce of camphor with this preparation wash your mouth and rub your loins and your temples every day snuff a little up your nostrils when you go into the air and carry about you a bit of sponge dipped in the same in order to smell too upon all occasions especially when you are near any place or person that is infected they write that four malefactors who had robbed the infected houses and murdered the people during the course of the plague owned when they came to the gallows that they had preserved themselves from the contagion by using the above medicine only and that they went the whole time from house to house without any fear of the distemper how to keep clear from bugs first take out of your room all silver and gold lace then set the chairs about the room shut up your windows and doors tack a blanket over each window and before the chimney and over the doors of the room set open all closets and cupboard doors all your drawers and boxes hang the rest of your bedding on the chair backs lay the feather bed on a table then set a large broad earthen pan in the middle of the room and in that set a chafing dish that stands on feet full of charcoal well lighted if your room is very bad 
a pound of rolled brimstone if only a few half a pound lay it on the charcoal and get out of the room as quick as possibly you can or it will take away your breath shut your door close with the blanket over it and be sure to set it so as nothing can catch fire if you have any india pepper throw it in with the brimstone you must take great care to have the door open whilst you lay in the brimstone that you may get out as soon as possible do not open the door under six hours and then you must be very careful how you go in to open the windows therefore let the door stand open an hour before you open the windows then brush and sweep your room very clean wash it well with boiling lee or boiling water with a little unslacked lime in it get a pint of spirits of wine a pint of spirits of turpentine and an ounce of camphor shake all well together and with a bunch of feathers wash your bedstead very well and sprinkle the rest over the feather bed and about the wainscot and room if you find great swarms about the room and some not dead do this over again and you will be quite clear every spring and fall wash your bedstead with half a pint and you will never have a bug but if you find any come in with new goods or boxes etc only wash your bedstead and sprinkle all over your bedding and bed and you will be clear but be sure to do it as soon as you find one if your room is very bad it will be well to paint the room after the brimstone is burnt in it this never fails if rightly done an effectual way to clear your bedstead of bugs take quicksilver and mix it well in a mortar with the white of an egg till the quicksilver is well mixed and there is no blubbers then beat up some white of an egg very fine and mix with the quicksilver till it is like a fine ointment then with a feather anoint the bedstead all over in every creek and corner and about the lacing and binding where you think there is any do this two or three times it is a certain cure and will not spoil anything directions to the housemaid always when you sweep a room throw a little wet sand all over it and that will gather up all the slough and dust prevent it from rising clean the boards and save the bedding pictures and all other furniture from dust and dirt end of section 39section forty of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain editions first printed in the fifth edition and now enlarged and improved to dress a turtle the west india way take the turtle out of water the night before you dress it and lay it on its back in the morning cut its head off and hang it up by its hind fins for it to bleed till the blood is all out then cut the callipee which is the belly round and raise it up cut as much meat to it as you can throw it into spring water with a little salt cut the fins off and scald them with the head take off all the scales cut all the white meat out and throw it into spring water and salt the guts and lungs must be cut out wash the lungs very clean from the blood then take the guts and more and slit them open wash them very clean and put them on to boil in a large pot of water and boil them till they are tender then take off the inside skin and cut them in pieces of two or three inches long have ready a good veal broth made as follows take one large or two small knuckles of veal and put them on in three gallons of water let it boil skim it well season with turnips onions carrots and celery and a good large bundle of sweet herbs boil it till it is half wasted then strain it off take the fins and put them in a stew pan 
cover them with veal broth season with an onion chopped fine all sorts of sweet herbs chopped very fine half an ounce of cloves and mace half a nutmeg beat very fine stew it very gently till tender then take the fins out and put in a pint of madeira wine and stew it for fifteen minutes beat up the whites of six eggs with the juice of two lemons put the liquor in and boil it up run it through a flannel bag make it hot wash the fins very clean and put them in take a piece of butter and put at the bottom of a stew pan put your white meat in and sweat it gently till it is almost tender take the lungs and heart and cover them with veal broth with an onion herbs and spice as for the fins stew them till tender take out the lungs strain the liquor off thicken it and put in a bottle of madeira wine season with cayenne pepper and salt pretty high put in the lungs and white meat stew them up gently for fifteen minutes have some forcemeat balls made out of the white part instead of veal as for scotch collops if any eggs scald them if not take twelve hard yolks of eggs made into egg balls have your calipash or deep shell done round the edges with paste season it in the inside with cayenne pepper and salt and a little madeira wine bake it half an hour then put in the lungs and white meat force meat and eggs over and bake it half an hour take the bones and three quarts of veal broth seasoned with an onion a bundle of sweet herbs two blades of mace stew it an hour strain it through a sieve thicken it with flour and butter put in half a pint of madeira wine stew it half an hour season with cayenne pepper and salt to your liking this is the soup take the calipi run your knife between the meat and shell and fill it full of force meat season it all over with sweet herbs chopped fine a shallot chopped cayenne pepper and salt and a little madeira wine put a paste round the edge and bake it an hour and a half take the guts and more put them in a stew pan with a little broth a bundle of sweet herbs two blades of mace beat fine thicken with a little butter rolled in flour stew them gently for half an hour season with cayenne pepper and salt beat up the yolks of two eggs in half a pint of cream put it in and keep stirring it one way till it boils up then dish them up as follows first the calipi then the fricassee soup and fins followed by the calipash the fins eat fine when cold put by in the liquor another way to dress a turtle kill your turtle as before then cut the belly shell clean off cut off the fins take all the white meat out and put it into spring water take the guts and lungs out do the guts as before wash the lungs well scold the fins head and belly shell take a saw and saw the shell all round about two inches deep scold it and take the shell off cut it in pieces take the shells fins and head and put them in a pot cover them with veal broth season with two large onions chopped fine all sorts of sweet herbs chopped fine half an ounce of cloves and mace a whole nutmeg stew them till tender take out all the meat and strain the liquor through a sieve cut the fins in two or three pieces take all the brawn from the bones cut it in pieces of about two inches square take the white meat put some butter at the bottom of a stew pan put your meat in and sweat it gently over a slow fire till almost done take it out of the liquor and cut it in pieces about the bigness of a goose's egg take the lungs and heart and cover them with veal broth season with an onion sweet herbs and a little beet spice always observe to boil the liver by itself 
stew it till tender take the lungs out and cut them in pieces strain off the liquor through a sieve take a pound of butter and put in a large stew pan big enough to hold all the turtle and melt it put half a pound of flour in and stir it till it is smooth put in the liquor and keep stirring it till it is well mixed if lumpy strain it through a sieve put in your meat of all sorts a great many forcemeat balls and egg balls and put in three pints of madeira wine season with pepper and salt and cayenne pepper pretty high stew it three quarters of an hour add the juice of two lemons have your deep shell baked put some into the shells and bake it or brown it with a hot iron and serve the rest in tureens note well this is for a turtle of sixty pounds weight to make a mock turtle take a large calf's head with the skin on well scalded and cleaned boil it three quarters of an hour take it out and slit it down the face take all the skin and meat from the bones as clean as possible be careful you do not break off the ears lay it on a dresser and fill the ears full of force meat tie them round with a cloth take out the eyes and pick all the meat from the bones put it in a large stew pan with the best and fattest parts of another head without the skin boiled as long as the above and three quarts of veal gravy lay the skin on the meat with the flesh side up and cover the pan close let it stew one hour over a moderate fire put in three sweetbreads cut in pieces two ounce of truffles and morels four artichoke bottoms boiled and cut in four pieces each an anchovy boned and chopped small season it pretty high with salt and cayenne pepper put in half a lemon three pints of madeira wine two spoonfuls of ketchup one of lemon pickle half a pint of pickled or fresh mushrooms a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour and let it all stew half an hour longer take the yolks of four eggs boiled hard and the brains of both heads boiled cut the brains in pieces of the size of a nutmeg make a rich force meat and roll it up in a veal caul and then in a cloth and boil it one hour cut it in three parts the middle piece the largest put the meat into the dish and lay the head over it the skin side uppermost put the largest piece of force meat between the ears the other two slices at the narrow end opposite each other put the brains eggs mushrooms etc over and round it and pour the liquor hot upon it and send it up as quick as possible as it soon gets cold to make ice cream pare and stone twelve ripe apricots and scald them beat them fine in a mortar add to them six ounces of double refined sugar and a pint of scalding cream and work it through a sieve put it in a tin with a close cover and set it in a tub of ice broken small with four handfuls of salt mixed among the ice when you see your cream grows thick round the edges of your tin stir it well and put it in again till it is quite thick when the cream is all froze up take it out of the tin and put it into the mould you intend to turn it out of put on the lid and have another tub of salt and ice ready as before put the mould in the middle and lay the ice under and over it let it stand four hours and never turn it out till the moment you want it then dip the mould in cold spring water and turn it into a plate you may do any sort of fruit the same way a turkey etc in jelly boil a turkey or a fowl as white as you can let it stand till cold and have ready a jelly made thus take a fowl skin it take off all the fat do not cut it to pieces nor break the bones take four pounds of a leg of veal without any fat or skin 
put it into a well tinned saucepan put to it full three quarts of water set it on a very clear fire till it begins to simmer be sure to skim it well but take great care it does not boil when it is well skimmed set it so as it will but just seem to simmer put to it two large blades of mace half a nutmeg and twenty corns of white pepper a little bit of lemon peel as big as a sixpence this will take six or seven hours doing when you think it is a stiff jelly which you will know by taking a little out to cool be sure to skim off all the fat if any and be sure not to stir the meat in the saucepan a quarter of an hour before it is done throw in a large teaspoonful of salt squeeze in the juice of half a fine seville orange or lemon when you think it is enough strain it off through a clean sieve but do not pour it off quite to the bottom for fear of settlings lay the turkey or fowl in the dish you intend to send it to the table in beat up the whites of six eggs to a froth and put the liquor to it then boil it five or six minutes and run it through a jelly bag till it is very clear then pour the liquor over it let it stand till quite cold colour some of the jelly in different colours and when it is near cold with a spoon sprinkle it over in what form or fancy you please and send it to table a few nasturtium flowers stuck here and there look pretty if you can get them but lemon and all those things are entirely fancy this is a very pretty dish for a cold collation or a supper all sorts of birds or fowls may be done this way to make citron quarter your melon and take out all the inside then put into the syrup as much as will cover the coat let it boil in the syrup till the coat is as tender as the inward part then put them in the pot with as much syrup as will cover them let them stand for two or three days that the syrup may penetrate through them and boil your syrup to a candy height with as much mountain wine as will wet your syrup clarify it and then boil it to a candy height then dip in the quarters and lay them on a sieve to dry and set them before a slow fire or put them in a slow oven till dry observe that your melon is but half ripe and when they are dry put them in deal boxes in paper to candy cherries or green gauges dip the stalks and leaves in white wine vinegar boiling then scald them in syrup take them out and boil the syrup to a candy height dip in the cherries and hang them to dry with the cherries downwards dry them before the fire or in the sun then take the plums after boiling them in a thin syrup peel off the skin and candy them and so hang them up to dry to take iron moulds out of linen take sorrel bruise it well in a mortar squeeze it through a cloth bottle it and keep it for use take a little of the above juice in a silver or tin saucepan boil it over a lamp as it boils dip in the iron mould do not rub it but only squeeze it as soon as the iron mould is out throw it into cold water to make india pickle to a gallon of vinegar one pound of garlic three quarters of a pound of long pepper a pint of mustard seed one pound of ginger and two ounces of turmeric the garlic must be laid in salt three days then wiped clean and dried in the sun the long pepper broke and the mustard seed bruised mix all together in the vinegar then take two large hard cabbages and two cauliflowers cut them in quarters and salt them well let them lie three days and dry them well in the sun note well the ginger must lie twenty-four hours in salt and water then cut small and laid in salt three days to prevent the infection among horned cattle 
make an issue in the dewlap put in a peg of black hellebore and rub all events both behind and before with tar end of section forty section forty one of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain necessary directions whereby the reader may easily attain the useful art of carving to cut up a turkey raise the leg open the joint but be sure not to take off the leg lace down both sides of the breast and open the pinion of the breast but do not take it off raise the merry thought between the breastbone and the top raise the brawn and turn it outward on both sides but be careful not to cut it off nor break it divide the wing pinions from the joint next the body and stick each pinion where the brawn was turned out cut off the sharp end of the pinion and the middle piece will fit the place exactly a bustard capon or pheasant is cut up in the same manner to rear a goose cut off both legs in the manner of shoulders of lamb take off the belly piece close to the extremity of the breast lace the goose down both sides of the breast about half an inch from the sharp bone divide the pinions and the flesh first laced with your knife which must be raised from the bone and taken off with the pinion from the body then cut off the merry thought and cut another slice from the breastbone quite through lastly turn up the carcass cutting it asunder the back above the loin bones to unbrace a mallard or duck first raise the pinions and legs but cut them not off then raise the merry thought from the breast and lace it down both sides with your knife to unlace a coney the back must be turned downward and the apron divided from the belly this done slip in your knife between the kidneys loosening the flesh on each side then turn the belly cut the back crossways between the wings draw your knife down both sides of the backbone dividing the sides and leg from the back observe not to pull the leg too violently from the bone when you open the side but with great exactness lay open the sides from the scut to the shoulder and then put the legs together to wing a partridge or quail after having raised the legs and wings use salt and powdered ginger for sauce to allay a pheasant or teal this differs in nothing from the foregoing but that you must use salt only for sauce to dismember a hern cut off the legs lace the breast down each side and open the breast pinion without cutting it off raise the merry thought between the breastbone and the top of it then raise the brawn turning it outward on both sides but break it not nor cut it off sever the wing pinion from the joint nearest the body sticking the pinions in the place where the brawn was remember to cut off the sharp end of the pinion and supply the place with the middle piece in this manner some people cut up a capon or pheasant and likewise a bittern using no sauce but salt to thigh a woodcock the legs and wings must be raised in the manner of a fowl only open the head for the brains and so you thigh curlews plover or snipe using no sauce but salt to display a crane after his legs are unfolded cut off the wings take them up and sauce them with powdered ginger vinegar salt and mustard to lift a swan slit it fairly down the middle of the breast clean through the back from the neck to the rump divide it in two parts neither breaking or tearing the flesh then lay the halves in a charger 
the slit sides downwards throw salt upon it and set it again on the table the sauce must be children served up in saucers end of section 41section forty two of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain appendix part one observations on preserving salt meat so as to keep it mellow and fine for three or four months and to preserve potted butter take care when you salt your meat in the summer that it be quite cool after it comes from the butchers the way is to lay it on cold bricks for a few hours and when you salt it lay it upon an inclining board to drain off the blood then salt it afresh add to every pound of salt half a pound of lisbon sugar and turn it in the pickle every day at the month's end it will be fine the salt which is commonly used hardens and spoils all the meat the right sort is that called lounds salt it comes from nantwich in cheshire there is a very fine sort that comes from Maldon in essex and from suffolk which is the reason of that butter being finer than any other and if everybody would make use of that salt in potting butter we should not have so much bad come to market observing all the general rules of a dairy if you keep your meat long in salt half the quantity of sugar will do and then bestow loaf sugar it will eat much finer this pickle cannot be called extravagant because it will keep a great while at three or four months end boil it up if you have no meat in the pickle skim it and when cold only add a little more salt and sugar to the next meat you put in and it will be good a twelve month longer take a leg of mutton piece veiny or thick flank piece without any bone pickled as above only add to every pound of salt an ounce of saltpetre after being a month or two in the pickle take it out and lay it in soft water a few hours then roast it it eats fine a leg of mutton or shoulder of veal does the same it is a very good thing where a market is at a great distance and a large family obliged to provide a great deal of meat as to the pickling of hams and tongues you have the receipt in the foregoing chapters but use either of these fine salts and they will be equal to any bayonne hams provided your porkling is fine and well fed to make mock turtle soup take a calf's head and scald the hair off as you would a pig and wash it very clean boil it in a large pot of water half an hour then cut all the skin off by itself take the tongue out take the broth made of a knuckle of veal put in the tongue and skin with three large onions half an ounce of cloves and mace and half a nutmeg beat fine all sorts of sweet herbs chopped fine and three anchovies stew it till tender then take out the meat and cut it in pieces about two inches square and the tongue in slices mind to skin the tongue strain the liquor through a sieve take half a pound of butter and put in the stew pan melt it and put in a quarter of a pound of flour keep it stirring till it is smooth then put in the liquor keep it stirring till all is in if lumpy strain it through a sieve then put to your meat a bottle of madeira wine season with pepper and salt and cayenne pepper pretty high put in forcemeat balls and egg balls boiled the juice of two lemons stew it one hour gently and then serve it up in tureens note well if it is too thick put some more broth in before you stew it the last time to dress haddocks after the spanish way take a haddock 
washed very clean and dried and broil it nicely then take a quarter of a pint of oil in a stew pan season it with mace cloves and nutmeg pepper and salt two cloves of garlic some love apples when in season a little vinegar put in the fish cover it close and let it stew half an hour over a slow fire flounders done the same way are very good to dress haddocks the jews way take two large fine haddocks wash them very clean cut them in slices about three inches thick and dry them in a cloth take a gill either of oil or butter in a stew pan a middling onion cut small a handful of parsley washed and cut small let it just boil up in either butter or oil then put in the fish season it with beaten mace pepper and salt half a pint of soft water let it stew softly till it is thoroughly done then take the yolks of two eggs beat up with the juice of a lemon and just as it is done enough throw it over and send it to table a spanish peas soup take one pound of spanish peas and lay them in water the night before you use them then take a gallon of water one quart of fine sweet oil a head of garlic cover the pot close and let it boil till the peas are soft then season with pepper and salt then beat the yolk of an egg and vinegar to your palate poach some eggs lay on the dish on sippets and pour the soup on them send it to table to make onion soup the spanish way take two large spanish onions peel and slice them let them boil very softly in half a pint of sweet oil till the onions are very soft then pour on them three pints of boiling water season with beaten pepper salt a little beaten clove and mace two spoonfuls of vinegar a handful of parsley washed clean and chopped fine let it boil fast a quarter of an hour in the meantime get some sippets to cover the bottom of the dish fried quick not hard lay them in the dish and cover each sippet with a poached egg beat up the yolks of two eggs and throw over them pour in your soup and send it to table garlic and sorrel done the same way eats well milk soup the dutch way take a quart of milk boil it with cinnamon and moist sugar put sippets in the dish pour the milk over it and set it over a charcoal fire to simmer till the bread is soft take the yolks of two eggs beat them up and mix it with a little of the milk and throw it in mix it all together and send it up to table fish pasties the italian way take some flour and knead it with oil take a slice of salmon season it with pepper and salt and dip into sweet oil chop an onion and parsley fine and strew over it lay it in the paste and double it up in the shape of a slice of salmon take a piece of white paper oil it and lay under the pasty and bake it it is best cold and will keep a month mackerel done the same way head and tail together folded in a pasty eats fine asparagus dressed the same way take the asparagus break them in pieces then boil them soft and drain the water from them take a little oil water and vinegar let it boil season it with pepper and salt throw in the asparagus and thicken with yolks of eggs endive done this way is good the spaniards add sugar but that spoils them green peas done as above are very good only add a lettuce cut small and two or three onions and leave out the eggs red cabbage dressed after the dutch way good for a cold in the breast take the cabbage cut it small and boil it soft then drain it and put it in a stew pan with a sufficient quantity of oil and butter a little water and vinegar and an onion cut small season it with pepper and salt 
and let it simmer on a slow fire till all the liquor is wasted cauliflowers dressed the spanish way boil them but not too much then drain them and put them into a stew pan to a large cauliflower put a quarter of a pint of sweet oil and two or three cloves of garlic let them fry till brown then season them with pepper and salt two or three spoonfuls of vinegar cover the pan very close and let them simmer over a very slow fire an hour carrots and french beans dressed the dutch way slice the carrots very thin and just cover them with water season them with pepper and salt cut a good many onions and parsley small a piece of butter let them simmer over a slow fire till done do french beans the same way beans dressed the german way take a large bunch of onions peel and slice them a great quantity of parsley washed and cut small throw them into a stew pan with a pound of butter season them well with pepper and salt put in two quarts of beans cover them close and let them do till the beans are brown shaking the pan often do peas the same way artichoke suckers dressed the spanish way clean and wash them and cut them in halves then boil them in water drain them from the water and put them into a stew pan with a little oil a little water and a little vinegar season them with pepper and salt stew them a little while and then thicken them with yolks of eggs they make a pretty garnish done thus clean them and half boil them then dry them flour them and dip them in yolks of eggs and fry them brown to dry pears without sugar take the norwich pears pare them with a knife and put them in an earthen pot and bake them not too soft put them into a white plate pan and put dry straw under them and lay them in an oven after bread is drawn and every day warm the oven to the degree of heat as when the bread is newly drawn within one week they must be dry ginger tablet melt a pound of loaf sugar with a little bit of butter over the fire and put in an ounce of pounded ginger keep it stirring till it begins to rise into a froth then pour it into pewter plates and let it stand to cool the platter must be rubbed with a little oil and then put them in a china dish and send them to table garnish with flowers of any kind artichokes preserved the spanish way take the largest you can get cut the tops of the leaves off wash them well and drain them to every artichoke pour in a large spoonful of oil season with pepper and salt send them to the oven and bake them they will keep a year note well the italians french portuguese and spaniards have variety of ways of dressing fish which we have not namely as making fish soups ragouts pies etc for their soups they use no gravy nor in their sauces thinking it improper to mix flesh and fish together but make their fish soups with fish especially either of crawfish lobsters etc taking only the juice of them for example take your crawfish tie them up in a muslin rag and boil them then press out their juice for the above said use for their pies they make some of carp others of different fish and some they make like our minced pies in other words they take a carp and cut the flesh from the bones and mince it adding currants etc almond rice blanch the almonds and pound them in a marble or wooden mortar and mix them in a little boiling water press them as long as there is any milk in the almonds adding fresh water every time to every quart of almond juice a quarter of a pound of rice and two or three spoonfuls of orange flower water 
mix them all together and simmer it over a very slow charcoal fire keep stirring it often when done sweeten it to your palate put it into plates and throw beaten cinnamon over it sham chocolate take a pint of milk boil it over a slow fire with some whole cinnamon and sweeten it with lisbon sugar beat up the yolks of three eggs throw all together into a chocolate pot and mill it one way or it will turn serve it up in chocolate cups marmalade of eggs the jews way take the yolks of twenty-four eggs beat them for an hour clarify one pound of the best moist sugar four spoonfuls of orange flower water one ounce of blanched and pounded almonds stir all together over a very slow charcoal fire keeping stirring it all the while one way till it comes to a consistence then put it into coffee cups and throw a little beaten cinnamon on the top of the cups this marmalade mixed with pounded almonds with orange peel and citron are made in cakes of all shapes such as birds fish and fruit a cake the spanish way take twelve eggs three quarters of a pound of the best moist sugar mill them in a chocolate mill till they are all of a lather then mix in one pound of flour half a pound of pounded almonds two ounces of candied orange peel two ounces of citron four large spoonfuls of orange water half an ounce of cinnamon and a glass of sack it is better when baked in a slow oven another way take one pound of flour one pound of butter eight eggs one pint of boiling milk two or three spoonfuls of ale yeast or a glass of french brandy beat all well together then set it before the fire in a pan where there is room for it to rise cover it close with a cloth and flannel that no air comes to it when you think it is raised sufficiently mix half a pound of the best moist sugar an ounce of cinnamon beat fine four spoonfuls of orange flower water one ounce of candied orange peel one ounce of citron mix all well together and bake it to dry plums take pear plums fair and clear coloured weigh them and slit them up the sides put them into a broad pan and fill it full of water set them over a very slow fire take care that the skin does not come off when they are tender take them up and to every pound of plums put a pound of sugar strew a little on the bottom of a large silver basin then lay your plums in one by one and strew the remainder of your sugar over them set them into your stove all night with a good warm fire the next day heat them and set them into your stove again and let them stand two days more turning them every day then take them out of the syrup and lay them on glass plates to dry to make sugar of pearl take damask rose water half a pint one pound of fine sugar half an ounce of prepared pearl beat to powder eight leaves of beaten gold boil them together according to art add the pearl and gold leaves when just done then cast them on a marble to make fruit wafers of codlins plums etc take the pulp of any fruit rubbed through a hair sieve and to every three ounces of fruit take six ounces of sugar finely sifted dry the sugar very well till it be very hot heat the pulp also till it be very hot then mix it and set over a slow charcoal fire till it be almost a boiling then pour it into glasses or trenchers and set it in the stove till you see it will leave the glasses but before it begins to candy turn them on papers in what form you please you may colour them red with clove gilly flowers steeped in the juice of lemon to make white wafers beat the yolk of an egg and mix it with a quarter of a pint of fair water then mix half a pound of best flour 
and thin it with damask rose water till you think it of a proper thickness to bake sweeten it to your palate with fine sugar finely sifted to make brown wafers take a quart of ordinary cream then take the yolks of three or four eggs and as much fine flour as will make it into a thin batter sweeten it with three quarters of a pound of fine sugar finely searced and as much pounded cinnamon as will make it taste do not mix them till the cream be cold butter your pans and make them very hot before you bake them how to dry peaches take the fairest and ripest peaches pare them into fair water take their weight in double refined sugar of one half make a very thin syrup then put in your peaches boiling them till they look clear then split and stone them boil them till they are very tender lay them a draining take the other half of the sugar and boil it almost to a candy then put in your peaches and let them lie all night then lay them on a glass and set them in a stove till they are dry if they are sugared too much wipe them with a wet cloth a little let the first syrup be very thin a quart of water to a pound of sugar how to make almond knots take two pounds of almonds and blanch them in hot water beat them in a mortar to a very fine paste with rose water do what you can to keep them from oiling take a pound of double refined sugar sifted through a lawn sieve leave out some to make up your knots put the rest into a pan upon the fire till it is scalding hot at the same time have your almonds scalding hot in another pan then mix them together with the whites of three eggs beaten to froth and let it stand till it is cold then roll it with some of the sugar you left out and lay them in platters of paper they will not roll into any shape but lay them as well as you can and bake them in a cool oven it must not be too hot neither must they be coloured to preserve apricots take your apricots and pare them then stone what you can whole then give them a light boiling in a pint of water or according to your quantity of fruit then take the weight of your apricots in sugar and take the liquor which you boil them in and your sugar and boil it till it comes to a syrup and give them a light boiling taking off the scum as it rises when the syrup jellies it is enough then take up the apricots and cover them with the jelly and put cut paper over them and lay them down when cold how to make almond milk for a wash take five ounces of bitter almonds blanch them and beat them in a marble mortar very fine you may put in a spoonful of sack when you beat them then take the whites of three new laid eggs three pints of spring water and one pint of sack mix them all very well together then strain it through a fine cloth and put it into a bottle and keep it for use you may put in lemon or powder of pearl when you make use of it how to make gooseberry wafers take gooseberries before they are ready for preserving cut off the black heads and boil them with as much water as will cover them all to mash then pass the liquor and all as it will run through a hair sieve and put some pulp through with a spoon but not too near it is to be pulped neither too thick nor too thin measure it and to a gill of it take half a pound of double refined sugar dry it put it to your pulp and let it scold on a slow fire not to boil at all stir it very well and then will rise a frothy white scum which take clear off as it rises you must scold and skim it till no scum rises and it comes clean from the pan side then take it off and let it cool a little have ready sheets of glass very smooth about the thickness of parchment which is not very thick you must spread it on the glasses with a knife very thin even and smooth 
then set it in the stove with a slow fire if you do it in the morning at night you must cut it into long pieces with a broad case knife and put your knife clear under it and fold it two or three times over and lay them in a stove turning them sometimes till they are pretty dry but do not keep them too long for they will lose their colour if they do not come clean off your glasses at night keep them till next morning how to make the thin apricot chips take your apricots or peaches pare them and cut them very thin into chips and take three quarters of their weight in sugar it being finely searced then put the sugar and the apricots into a pewter dish and set them upon coals and when the sugar is all dissolved turn them upon the edge of the dish out of the syrup and so set them by keep them turning till they have drank up all the syrup be sure they never boil they must be warmed in the syrup once every day and so laid out upon the edge of the dish till the syrup be drank to preserve golden pippins take the rind of an orange and boil it very tender lay it in cold water for three days take two dozen of golden pippins pare core quarter them and boil them to a strong jelly and run it through a jelly bag till it is clear take the same quantity of pippins pare them and take out the cores put three pounds of loaf sugar in a preserving pan with three half pints of spring water when it boils skim it well and put in your pippins with the orange rind cut in long thin slips let them boil fast till the sugar is thick and will almost candy then put in three half pints of pippin jelly and boil it fast till the jelly is clear then squeeze in the juice of a lemon give it a boil and put them in pots or glasses with the orange peel you may use lemon peel instead of orange but then you must only boil it not soak it to preserve grapes get some fine grapes not over ripe either red or white but very close and pick all the specked ones put them in a jar with a quarter of a pound of sugar candy and fill the jar with common brandy tie them down close and keep them in a dry cold place you may do morello cherries the same way end of section 42section forty three of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain appendix part two from to preserve green codlings gather your codlings when they are the size of a walnut with the stalks and a leaf or two on put a handful of vine leaves into a preserving pan then a layer of codlings then vine leaves and then codlings till it is full and vine leaves pretty thick at top and fill it with spring water cover it close to keep in the steam and set it on a slow fire till they grow soft then take them out and take off the skins with a penknife and then put them in the same water again with the vine leaves which must be quite cold or it will make them crack put in a little rock alum and set them over a slow fire till they are green then take them out and lay them on a sieve to drain make a good syrup and give them a gentle boil for three days then put them in small jars with brandy paper over them and tie them down tight how to make blackberry wine take your berries when full ripe put them into a large vessel of wood or stone with a spigot in it and pour upon them as much boiling water as will just appear at the top of them as soon as you can endure your hand in them bruise them very well till all the berries be broke then let them stand close covered till the berries be well wrought up to the top which usually is three or four days 
then draw off the clear juice into another vessel and add to every ten quarts of this liquor one pound of sugar stir it well in and let it stand to work in another vessel like the first a week or ten days then draw it off at the spigot through a jelly bag into a large vessel take four ounces of icing glass lay it in steep twelve hours in a pint of white wine the next morning boil it till it be all dissolved upon a slow fire then take a gallon of your blackberry juice put in the dissolved icing glass give it a boil together and put it in hot the best way to make raisin wine take a clean wine or brandy hogshead take great care it is very sweet and clean put in two hundred of raisins stalks and all and then fill the vessel with fine clear spring water let it stand till you think it has done hissing then throw in two quarts of fine french brandy put in the bung slightly and in about three weeks or a month if you are sure it has done fretting stop it down close let it stand six months peg it near the top and if you find it very fine and good fit for drinking bottle it off or else stop it up again and let it stand six months longer it should stand six months in the bottle this is by much the best way of making it as i have seen by experience as the wine will be much stronger but less of it the different sorts of raisins make quite a different wine and after you have drawn off all the wine throw on ten gallons of spring water take off the head of the barrel and stir it well twice a day pressing the raisins as well as you can let it stand a fortnight or three weeks then draw it off into a proper vessel to hold it and squeeze the raisins well add two quarts of brandy and two quarts of syrup of elderberries stop it close when it has done working and in about three months it will be fit for drinking if you do not choose to make this second wine fill your hogshead with spring water and set it in the sun for three or four months and it will make excellent vinegar how to preserve white quinces whole take the weight of your quinces in sugar and put a pint of water to a pound of sugar make it into a syrup and clarify it then call your quince and pare it put it into your syrup and let it boil till it be all clear then put in three spoonfuls of jelly which must be made thus overnight lay your quince kernels in water then strain them and put them into your quinces and let them have but one boil afterward how to make orange wafers take the best oranges and boil them in three or four waters till they be tender then take out the kernels and the juice and beat them to a pulp in a clean marble mortar and rub them through a hair sieve to a pound of this pulp take a pound and a half of double refined sugar beaten and searced take half of your sugar and put it into your oranges and boil it till it ropes then take it from the fire and when it is cold make it up in a paste with the other half of your sugar make but a little at a time for it will dry too fast then with a little rolling pin roll them out as thin as tiffany upon papers cut them round with a little drinking glass and let them dry and they will look very clear how to make orange cakes take the peels of four oranges being first pared and the meat taken out boil them tender and beat them small in a marble mortar then take the meat of them and two more oranges your seeds and skins being picked out and mix it with the peelings that are beaten set them on the fire with a spoonful or two of orange flower water keeping it stirring till that moisture be pretty well dried up then have ready to every pound of that pulp 
four pounds and a quarter of double refined sugar finely searced make your sugar very hot and dry it upon the fire and then mix it and the pulp together and set it on the fire again till the sugar be very well melted but be sure it does not boil you may put in a little peel small shred or grated and when it is cold draw it up in double papers dry them before the fire and when you turn them put two together or you may keep them in deep glasses or pots and dry them as you have occasion how to make white cakes like china dishes take the yolks of two eggs and two spoonfuls of sack and as much rose water some caraway seeds and as much flour as will make it a paste stiff enough to roll very thin if you would have them like dishes you must bake them upon dishes buttered cut them out into what work you please to candy them take a pound of fine sear sugar perfumed and the white of an egg and three or four spoonfuls of rose water stir it till it looks white and when that paste is cold do it with a feather on one side this candied let it dry and do the other side so and dry it also to make lemon honeycomb take the juice of one lemon and sweeten it with fine sugar to your palate then take a pint of cream and the white of an egg and put in some sugar and beat it up and as the froth rises take it off and put it on the juice of the lemon till you have taken all the cream off upon the lemon make it the day before you want it in a dish that is proper how to dry cherries take eight pounds of cherries one pound of the best powdered sugar stone the cherries over a great deep basin or glass and lay them one by one in rows and strew a little sugar thus do till your basin is full to the top and let them stand till the next day then pour them out into a great posnip set them on the fire let them boil very fast a quarter of an hour or more then pour them again into your basin and let them stand two or three days then take them out and lay them one by one on hair sieves and set them in the sun or an oven till they are dry turning them every day upon dry sieves if in the oven it must be as little warm as you can just feel it when you hold your hand in it how to make fine almond cakes take a pound of jordan almonds blanch them beat them very fine with a little orange flower water to keep them from oiling then take a pound and a quarter of fine sugar boil it to a candy height then put in your almonds then take two fresh lemons grate off the rind very thin and put as much juice as to make it of a quick taste then put it into your glasses and set it into your stove stirring them often that they do not candy so when it is a little dry put it into little cakes upon sheets of glass to dry how to make uxbridge cakes take a pound of wheat flour seven pounds of currants half a nutmeg four pounds of butter rub your butter cold very well amongst the meal dress your currants very well in the flour butter and seasoning and knead it with so much good new yeast as will make it into a pretty high paste usually two pennyworth of yeast to that quantity after it is kneaded well together let it stand an hour to rise you may put half a pound of paste in a cake how to make mead take ten gallons of water and two gallons of honey a handful of raced ginger then take two lemons cut them in pieces and put them into it boil it very well keep it skimming let it stand all night in the same vessel you boil it in the next morning barrel it up with two or three spoonfuls of good yeast about three weeks or a month after you may bottle it 
marmalade of cherries take five pounds of cherries stoned and two pounds of hard sugar shred your cherries wet your sugar with the juice that runneth from them then put the cherries into the sugar and boil them pretty fast till it be a marmalade when it is cold put it up in glasses for use to dry damosins take four pounds of damosins take one pound of fine sugar make a syrup of it with about a pint of fair water then put in your damosins stir it into your hot syrup so let them stand on a little fire to keep them warm for half an hour then put all into a basin and cover them let them stand till the next day then put the syrup from them and set it on the fire and when it is very hot put it on your damosins this do twice a day for three days together then draw the syrup from the damosins and lay them in an earthen dish and set them in an oven after bread is drawn when the oven is cold take them and turn them and lay them upon clean dishes set them in the sun or in another oven till they are dry marmalade of quince white take the quinces pare them and core them put them into water as you pare them to be kept from blacking then boil them so tender that a quarter of straw will go through them then take their weight of sugar and beat them break the quinces with the back of a spoon and then put in the sugar and let them boil fast uncovered till they slide from the bottom of the pan you may make paste of the same only dry it in a stove drawing it out into what form you please to preserve apricots or plums green take your plums before they have stones in them which you may know by putting a pin through them then coddle them in many waters till they are as green as grass peel them and coddle them again you must take the weight of them in sugar and make a syrup put to your sugar a jack of water then put them in set them on a fire to boil slowly till they be clear skimming them often and they will be very green put them up in glasses and keep them for use to preserve cherries take two pounds of cherries one pound and a half of sugar half a pint of fair water melt your sugar in it when it is melted put in your other sugar and your cherries then boil them softly till all the sugar be melted then boil them fast and skim them take them off two or three times and shake them and put them on again and let them boil fast and when they are of a good colour and the syrup will stand they are enough to preserve barberries take the ripest and best barberries you can find take the weight of them in sugar then pick out the seeds and tops wet your sugar with the juice of them and make a syrup then put in your barberries and when they boil take them off and shake them and set them on again and let them boil and repeat the same till they are clean enough to put into glasses wigs take three pounds of well dried flour one nutmeg a little mace and salt and almost half a pound of caraway comforts mix these well together and melt half a pound of butter in a pint of sweet thick cream six spoonfuls of good sack four yolks and three whites of eggs and near a pint of good light yeast work these well together and cover it and set it down to the fire to rise then let them rest and lay the remainder the half pound of caraways on the top of the wigs and put them upon papers well floured and dried and let them have as quick an oven as for tarts to make fruit wafers codlins or plums do best take the pulp of fruit rub through a hair sieve and to three ounces of pulp take six ounces of sugar finely searced dry your sugar very well till it be very hot heat the pulp also very hot 
and put it to your sugar, and heat it on the fire till it be almost at boiling. Then pour it on the glasses or trenchers, and set it on the stove, till you see it will leave the glasses, but before it begins to candy, take them off, and turn them upon papers, in what form you please. You may colour them red, with clove gillyflowers steeped in the juice of lemon. To make German puffs. Take two spoonfuls of fine flour, two eggs beat well, half a pint of cream or milk, two ounces of melted butter, stir it all well together, and add a little salt and nutmeg. Put them in teacups or little deep tin moulds, half full, and bake them a quarter of an hour in a quick oven, but let it be hot enough to colour them at top and bottom. Turn them into a dish, and strew powder sugar over them. Cracknels Take half a pound of the whitest flour, and a pound of sugar beaten small, two ounces of butter cold, one spoonful of caraway seeds, steeped all night in vinegar. Then put in three yolks of eggs, and a little rose water. Work your paste together, and after that, beat it with a rolling pin, till it be light. Then roll it out thin, and cut it with a glass. Lay it in thin, on plates buttered, and prick them with a pin. Then take the yolks of two eggs, beaten with rose water, and rub them over with it. Then set them into a pretty quick oven, and when they are brown, take them out, and lay them in a dry place. To make orange loaves. Take your orange, and cut a round hole in the top. Take out all the meat, and as much of the white as you can, without breaking the skin. Then boil them in water till tender, shifting the water till it is not bitter. Then take them up, and wipe them dry. Then take a pound of fine sugar, a quart of water, or in proportion to the oranges. Boil it, and take off the scum as it riseth. Then put in your oranges, and let them boil a little, and let them lie a day or two in the syrup. Then take the yolks of two eggs, a quarter of a pint of cream, or more, beat them well together, then grate in two Naples biscuits, or white bread, a quarter of a pound of butter, and four spoonfuls of sack. Mix it all together till your butter is melted, then fill the oranges with it, and bake them in a slow oven, as long as you would a custard, then stick in some cut citron, and fill them up with sack, butter, and sugar grated over. To make a lemon tower, or pudding. Grate the outward rind of three lemons, take three quarters of a pound of sugar, and the same of butter, the yolks of eight eggs, beat them in a marble mortar at least an hour, then lay a thin rich crust in the bottom of the dish you bake it in, as you may something also over it. Three quarters of an hour will bake it. Make an orange pudding the same way, but pare the rinds, and boil them first in several waters, till the bitterness is boiled out. How to make the clear lemon cream? Take a gill of clear water, infuse it in the rind of a lemon, till it tastes of it, then take the whites of six eggs, the juice of four lemons. Beat all well together, and run them through a hair sieve, sweeten them with double refined sugar, and set them on the fire, not too hot, keeping stirring, and when it is thick enough, take it off. How to make chocolate. Take six pounds of cocoa nuts, one pound of anise seeds, four ounces of long pepper, one of cinnamon, a quarter of a pound of almonds, one pound of pistachios, as much acciotti as will make it the colour of brick three grains of musk, and as much amber grease, six pounds of loaf sugar, one ounce of nutmegs, dry and beat them, and searce them through a fine sieve. Your almonds must be beat to a paste, and mixed with the other ingredients. Then dip your sugar in orange flour or rose water, and put it in a skillet on a very gentle charcoal fire. Then put in the spice, and stew it well together, 
then the musk and amber grease then put in the cocoa nuts last of all then anchiotti wetting it with the water the sugar was dipped in stew all these very well together over a hotter fire than before then take it up and put it into boxes or what form you like and set it to dry in a warm place the pistachios and almonds must be a little beat in a mortar then ground upon a stone another way to make chocolate take six pounds of the best spanish nuts when parched and cleaned from the hulls take three pounds of sugar two ounces of the best cinnamon beaten and sifted very fine to every two pound of nuts put in three good vanillas or more or less as you please to every pound of nuts half a dram of cardamom seeds very finely beaten and searced cheesecakes without currants take two quarts of new milk set it as it comes from the cow with as little runnet as you can when it is come break it as gently as you can and weigh it well then pass it through a hair sieve and put it into a marble mortar and beat into it a pound of new butter washed in rose water when that is well mingled in the curd take the yolks of six eggs and the whites of three beat them very well with a little thick cream and salt and after you have made the coffins just as you put them into the crust which must not be till you are ready to set them into the oven then put in your eggs and sugar and a whole nutmeg finely grated stir them all well together and so fill your crusts and if you put a little fine sugar searced into the crust it will roll the thinner and cleaner three spoonfuls of thick sweet cream will be enough to beat up your eggs with how to preserve white pear plums take the finest and clearest from specks you can get to a pound of plums take a pound and a quarter of sugar the finest you can get a pint and a quarter of water slit the plums and stone them and prick them full of holes saving some sugar of beet fine laid in a basin as you do them lay them in and strew sugar over them when you have thus done have half a pound of sugar and your water ready made into a thin syrup and a little cold put in your plums with the slit side downwards set them on the fire keep them continually boiling neither too slow nor too fast take them often off shake them round and skim them well keep them down into the syrup continually for fear they lose their colour when they are thoroughly scalded strew on the rest of your sugar and keep doing so till they are enough which you may know by their glassing towards the latter end boil them up quickly to preserve currants take the weight of the currants in sugar pick out the seeds take to a pound of sugar half a jack of water let it melt then put in your berries and let them do very leisurely skim them and take them up let the syrup boil then put them on again and when they are clear and the syrup thick enough take them off and when they are cold put them up in glasses to preserve raspberries take of the raspberries that are not too ripe and take the weight of them in sugar wet your sugar with a little water and put in your berries and let them boil softly take heed of breaking them when they are clear take them up and boil the syrup till it be thick enough then put them in again and when they are cold put them up in glasses to make biscuit bread take half a pound of very fine wheat flour and as much sugar finely searced and dry them very well before the fire dry the flour more than the sugar then take four new laid eggs take out the strains then swing them very well then put the sugar in and swing it well with the eggs then put the flour in it and beat all together half an hour at the least 
put in some manner seeds or caraway seeds and rub the plates with butter and set them into the oven end of section 43section 44 of the art of cookery made plain and easy by hannah glass this librivox recording is in the public domain from to candy angelica take it in april boil it in water till it be tender then take it up and drain it from the water very well then scrape the outside of it and dry it in a clean cloth and lay it in the syrup and let it lie in three or four days and cover it close the syrup must be strong of sugar and keep it hot a good while and let it not boil after it is heated a good while lay it upon a pie plate and so let it dry keep it near the fire lest it dissolve to preserve cherries take their weight in sugar before you stone them when stoned make your syrup then put in your cherries let them boil slowly at the first till they be thoroughly warmed then boil them as fast as you can when they are boiled clear put in the jelly with almost the weight in sugar strew the sugar on the cherries for the colouring you must be ruled by your eye to a pound of sugar put a jack of water strew the sugar on them before they boil and put in the juice of currants soon after they boil to barrel morello cherries to one pound of full ripe cherries picked from the stems and wiped with a cloth take half a pound of double refined sugar and boil it to a candy height but not a high one put the cherries into a small barrel then put in the sugar by a spoonful at a time till it is all in and roll them about every day till they have done fermenting then bung it up close and they will be fit for use in a month it must be an iron hooped barrel to dry pear plums take two pounds of pear plums to one pound of sugar stone them and fill every one with sugar lay them in an earthen pot put to them as much water as will prevent burning them then set them in an oven after bread is drawn let them stand till they be tender then put them into a sieve to drain well from the syrup then set them in an oven again until they be a little dry then smooth the skins as well as you can and so fill them then set them in the oven again to harden then wash them in water scalding hot and dry them very well then put them in the oven again very cool to blue them put them between two pewter dishes and set them in the oven the filling for the aforesaid plums take the plums wipe them prick them in the seams put them in a pitcher and set them in a little boiling water let them boil very tender then pour most of the liquor from them then take off the skins and the stones to a pint of the pulp a pound of sugar well dried in the oven then let it boil till the scum rises which take off very clean and put into earthen plates and dry it in an oven and so fill the plums to candy cassia take as much of the powder of brown cassia as will lie upon two broad shillings with what musk and amber grease you think fitting the cassia and perfume must be powdered together then take a quarter of a pound of sugar and boil it to a candy height then put in your powder and mix it well together and pour it in pewter saucers or plates which must be buttered very thin and when it is cold it will slip out the cassia is to be bought at london sometimes it is in powder and sometimes in a hard lump to make caraway cakes take two pounds of white flour and two pounds of coarse loaf sugar well dried and fine sifted 
after the flour and sugar are sifted and weighed then mingle them together sift the flour and sugar together through a hair sieve into the bowl you use it in to them you must have two pounds of good butter eighteen eggs leaving out eight of the whites to these you must have four ounces of candied orange five or six ounces of caraway comfits you must first work the butter with rose water till you can see none of the water and your butter must be very soft then put in flour and sugar a little at a time and likewise your eggs but you must beat your eggs very well with ten spoonfuls of sack so you must put in each as you think fit keeping it constantly beating with your hand till you have put it into the hoop for the oven do not put in your sweetmeats and seeds till you are ready to put it into your hoops you must have three or four doubles of cap paper under the cakes and butter the paper and hoop you must sift some fine sugar upon your cake when it goes into the oven to preserve pippins in slices when your pippins are prepared but not cored cut them in slices and take the weight of them in sugar put to your sugar a pretty quantity of water let it melt and skim it let it boil again very high then put them into the syrup when they are clear lay them in shallow glasses in which you mean to serve them up then put into the syrup a candied orange peel cut in little slices very thin and lay about the pippin cover them with syrup and keep them about the pippin sack cream like butter take a quart of cream boil it with mace put to it six egg yolks well beaten so let it boil up then take it off the fire and put in a little sack and turn it then put it in a cloth and let the whey run from it then take it out of the cloth and season it with rose water and sugar being very well broken with a spoon serve it up in the dish and pink it as you would do a dish of butter so send it in with cream and sugar barley cream take a quart of french barley boil it in three or four waters till it be pretty tender then set a quart of cream on the fire with some mace and nutmeg when the water begins to boil drain out the barley from it put in the cream and let it boil till it be pretty thick and tender then season it with sugar and salt when it is cold serve it up almond butter take a quart of cream put in some mace whole and a quartered nutmeg the yolks of eight eggs well beaten and three quarters of a pound of almonds well blanched and beaten extremely small with a little rose water and sugar and put all these together set them on the fire and stir them till they begin to boil then take it off and you will find it a little cracked so lay a strainer in the cullender and pour it into it and let it drain a day or two till you see it is firm like butter then run it through a cullender then it will be like little comfits and so serve it up sugar cakes take a pound and a half of very fine flour one pound of cold butter half a pound of sugar work all these well together into a paste then roll it with the palms of your hands into balls and cut them with a glass into cakes lay them in a sheet of paper with some flour under them to bake them you may make tumblets only blanch in almonds and beat them small and lay them in the midst of a long piece of paste and roll it round with your fingers and cast them into knots in what fashion you please prick them and bake them sugar cakes another way take half a pound of fine sugar searced and as much flour two eggs beaten with a little rose water a piece of butter about the bigness of an egg work them well together till they be a smooth paste then make them into cakes working every one with the palms of your hands then lay them in plates 
rubbed over with a little butter so bake them in an oven little more than warm you may make knots of the same the cakes are made of but in the mingling you must put in a few caraway seeds when they are wrought to paste roll them with the ends of your finger into small rolls and make it into knots lay them upon pie plates rubbed with butter and bake them clouted cream take four quarts of new milk from the cow and put it in a broad earthen pan and let it stand till the next day then put it over a very slow fire for half an hour make it nearly hot to set the cream then put it away till it is cold and take the cream off and beat it smooth with a spoon it is accounted in the west of england very fine for tea or coffee or to put over root tarts or pies quince cream take your quinces and put them in boiling water unpaired boil them apace uncovered lest they discolour when they are boiled pare them beat them very tender with sugar then take cream and mix it till it be pretty thick if you boil your cream with a little cinnamon it will be better but let it be cold before you put it to your quince citron cream take a quart of cream and boil it with three pennyworth of good clear isinglass which must be tied up in a piece of thin tiffany put in a blade or two of mace strongly boiled in your cream and isinglass till the cream be pretty thick sweeten it to your taste with perfumed hard sugar when it is taken off the fire put in a little rose water to your taste then take a piece of your green precious citron and cut it in little bits the breadth of point dales and about half as long and the cream being first put into dishes when it is half cold put in your citron so as it may but sink from the top that it may not be seen and may lie before it be at the bottom if you wash your citron before in rose water it will make the colour better and fresher so let it stand till the next day where it may get no water and where it may not be shaken cream of apples quince gooseberries prunes or raspberries take to every quart of cream four eggs being first well beat and strained and mix them with a little cold cream and put it to your cream being first boiled with whole mace keep it stirring till you find it begins to thicken at the bottom and sides your apples quinces and berries must be tenderly boiled so as they will crush in the pulp then season it with rose water and sugar to your taste putting it into dishes and when they are cold if there be any rose water and sugar which lies waterish at the top let it be drained out with a spoon this pulp must be made ready before you boil the cream and when it is boiled cover over your pulp a pretty thickness with your egg cream which must have a little rose water and sugar put to it sugar loaf cream take a quarter of a pound of hartshorn and put it to a pottle of water and set it on the fire in a pipkin covered till it be ready to seethe then pour off the water and put a pottle of water more to it and let it stand simmering on the fire till it be consumed to a pint and with it two ounces of isinglass washed in rose water which must be put in with the second water then strain it and let it cool then take three pints of cream and boil it very well with a bag of nutmeg cloves cinnamon and mace then take a quarter of a pound of jordan almonds and lay them one night in cold water to blanch and when they are blanched let them lie two hours in cold water then take them out and dry them in a clean linen cloth and beat them in a marble mortar with fair water or rose water beat them to a very fine pulp 
then take some of the aforesaid cream well warmed and put the pulp by degrees into it straining it through a cloth with the back of a spoon till all the goodness of the almonds be strained out into the cream then season the cream with rose water and sugar then take the aforesaid jelly warm it till it dissolves and season it with rose water and sugar and a grain of amber grease or musk if you please then mix your cream and jelly together very well and put it into glasses well warmed like sugar loaves and let it stand all night then put them out upon a plate or two or a white china dish and stick the cream with peony kernels or serve them in glasses one on every trencher conserve of roses boiled take red roses take off all the whites at the bottom or elsewhere take three times the weight of them in sugar put to a pint of roses a pint of water skim it well shred your roses a little before you put them into water cover them and boil the leaves tender in the water and when they are tender put in your sugar keep them stirring lest they burn when they are tender and the syrup be consumed put them up and so keep them for your use how to make orange biscuits pay your oranges not very thick put them into water but first weigh your peels let it stand over the fire and let it boil till it be very tender then beat it in a marble mortar till it be a very fine smooth paste to every ounce of peels put two ounces and a half of double refined sugar well searced mix them well together with a spoon in the mortar then spread it with a knife upon pie plates and set it in an oven a little warm or before the fire when it feels dry upon the top cut it into what fashion you please and turn them into another plate and set them in a stove till they be dry where the edges look rough when it is dry they must be cut with a pair of scissors how to make yellow varnish take a quart of spirit of wine and put to it eight ounces of sandarac shake it half an hour next day it will be fit for use but strain it first take lamp black and put in your varnish about the thickness of a pancake mix it well but stir it not too fast then do it eight times over and let it stand still the next day then take some burnt ivory and oil of turpentine as fine as butter then mix it with some of your varnish till you have varnished it fit for polishing then polish it with tripoli in fine flour then lay it on the wood smooth with one of the brushes then let it dry and do it so eight times at the least when it is very dry lay on your varnish that is mixed and when it is dry polish it with a wet cloth dipped in tripoli and rub it as hard as you would do platters how to make a pretty varnish to colour little baskets bowls or any board where nothing hot is set on take either red black or white wax which colour you want to make to every two ounces of sealing wax one ounce of spirit of wine pound the wax fine then sift it through a fine lawn sieve till you have made it extremely fine put it into a large phial with the spirits of wine shake it let it stand within the air of the fire forty-eight hours shaking it often then with a little brush rub your baskets all over with it let it dry and do it over a second time and it makes them look very pretty how to clean gold or silver lace take alabaster finely beaten and searced and put it into an earthen pipkin and set it upon a chafing dish of coals and let it boil for some time stirring it often with a stick first when it begins to boil it will be very heavy when it is enough you will find it in the stirring very light then take it off the fire 
lay your lace upon a piece of flannel and strew your powder upon it knock it well in with a hard cloth brush when you think it is enough brush the powder out with a clean brush how to make sweet powder for clothes take orris roots two pounds and a half of lignum rhodicum six ounces of scraped cypress roots three ounces of damask roses carefully dried a pound and a half of benjamin four ounces and a half of storax two ounces and a half of sweet marjoram three ounces of labdanum one ounce and a dram of calamus aromaticus and one dram of muscods six drams of lavender and flowers and melilot flowers if you please to clean white satins flowered silks with gold and silver in them take stale bread crumbled very fine mixed with powder blue rub it very well over the silk or satin then shake it well and with clean soft cloths dust it well if any gold or silver flowers afterwards take a piece of crimson in grain velvet and rub the flowers with it to keep arms iron or steel from rusting take the filings of lead or dust of lead finely beaten in an iron mortar putting to it oil of spike which will make the iron smell well and if you oil your arms or anything that is made of iron or steel you may keep them in moist airs from rusting the jews way to pickle beef which will go good to the west indies and keep a year good in the pickle and with care will go to the east indies take any piece of beef without bones or take the bones out if you intend to keep it above a month take mace cloves nutmeg and pepper and juniper berries beat fine and rub the beef well mix salt and jamaica pepper and bay leaves let it be well seasoned let it lie in this seasoning a week or ten days throw in a good deal of garlic and shallot boil some of the best white wine vinegar lay your meat in a pan or good vessel for the purpose with the pickle and when the vinegar is quite cold pour it over cover it close if it is for a voyage cover it with oil and let the cooper hoop up the barrel very well this is a good way in a hot country where meat will not keep then it must be put into the vinegar directly with the seasoning then you may either roast or stew it but it is best stewed and add a good deal of onion and parsley chopped fine some white wine a little ketchup truffles and morels a little good gravy a piece of butter rolled in flour or a little oil in which the meat and onions ought to stew a quarter of an hour before the other ingredients are put in then put all in and stir it together and let it stew till you think it is enough this is a good pickle in a hot country to keep beef or veal that is dressed to eat cold how to make cider after all your apples are bruised take half your quantity and squeeze them and the juice you press from them pour upon the others half bruised but not squeezed in a tub for the purpose having a tap at the bottom let the juice remain upon the apples three or four days then pull out your tap and let your juice run into some other vessel set under the tub to receive it and if it runs thick as at the first it will pour it upon the apples again till you see it run clear and as you have a quantity put it into your vessel but do not force the cider but let it drop as long as it will of its own accord having done this after you perceive that the sides begin to work take a quantity of isinglass an ounce will serve forty gallons infuse this in some of the cider till it be dissolved put to an ounce of isinglass a quart of cider and when it is so dissolved pour it into the vessel and stop it close for two days or something more 
then draw off the cider into another vessel this do so often till you perceive your cider to be free from all manner of sediment that may make it ferment and fret itself after christmas you may boil it you may by pouring water on the apples and pressing them make a pretty small cider if it be thick and muddy by using isinglass you may make it as clear as the rest you must dissolve the isinglass over the fire till it be jelly for fining cider take two quarts of skim milk four ounces of isinglass cut the isinglass in pieces and work it lukewarm in the milk over the fire and when it is dissolved then put it cold into the hogshead of cider and take a long stick and stir it well from top to bottom for half a quarter of an hour after it has fined take ten pounds of raisins of the sun two ounces of turmeric half an ounce of ginger beaten then take a quantity of raisins and grind them as you do mustard seed in a bowl with a little cider and so the rest of the raisins then sprinkle the turmeric and ginger amongst it then put all into a fine canvas bag and hang it in the middle of the hogshead close and let it lie after the cider has stood thus a fortnight or a month then you may bottle it at your pleasure End of section forty four